We've seen a bunch of tropical waves moving towards the Caribbean over the past couple weeks, but so far, none of them have strengthened into tropical cyclones. What's destroying these tropical waves? In this video, I'm going to show you exactly why the Atlantic is shut down for business right now, where the hurricanes actually are happening, and when things will get more active in the Atlantic. But first, if you're new here, feel free to hit that subscribe button for more tropical weather updates. Here's a look at the Atlantic. The NHC has no tropical cyclone activity expected during the next seven days. There's absolutely nothing really happening in the Atlantic right now. But the Eastern Pacific and more so the Central Pacific is a much different story where the Central Pacific is going wild with several tropical systems out there. And there's actually five tropical weather systems out there in the eastern and central pacific we have hurricane iona which is rapidly intensified into a high-end category three hurricane and in the latest advisory maximum sustained winds are at 125 miles an hour the minimum pressure is down to 957 millibars it's moving west at 14 miles per hour and then behind it we have tropical storm kelly with winds of 40 miles an hour very close to Hurricane Iona. So these are very close together. And then we have this disturbance right here with a 70% chance of tropical cyclone formation. Um, but actually, I think that that might actually come down in a more recent outlook. And then we have another disturbance with a 30% chance of tropical cyclone formation in the next seven days in the eastern Pacific. And then southwest of the southern coast of Mexico, we have Invest 99 with an 80 to 90% chance of tropical cyclone formation within the next two to seven days. And so th there's a lot happening out here in the central and eastern Pacific. Here's what that looks like on satellite imagery. You have Hurricane Iona right here, and then Tropical Storm Kelly very close to it. And this is not necessarily in a, in a very favorable place for it to intensify because you actually have the, the outflow of Hurricane Iona is actually going to be shearing Tropical Storm Kelly. So it's not expected to strengthen into anything significant. But then we do have this disturbance that did have a high chance of tropical cyclone formation, but notice all the thunderstorm activity has actually faded away from the area of low pressure. So probably not going to turn into much of anything. And then we have this area of thunderstorms. That's kind of another area to watch with a 30% chance of tropical cyclone formation. But then we have this, this big area of disorganized showers and thunderstorms out there in the eastern Pacific. And that's the disturbance with an 80 to 90% chance of formation over the next few days. Um, here's a look at Hurricane Iona. And on satellite imagery, you can see it did actually have an eye several hours ago. And now it looks like that has actually faded away. So it may actually be weakening down already, but here's the, the cone for Hurricane Iona. Pretty much it's gonna, it, it's not gonna be affecting any land areas or anything like that. It's moving well to the south of Hawaii, so nothing to worry about there. It is gonna stay a major hurricane for the next 12 hours, the next several hours before it does actually start weakening down, back down to category two, then a category one, and then it will weaken down to a tropical storm by Thursday, evening and then it continues on as a tropical storm all the way into Sunday and again the track guidance takes it out away from Hawaii really just out in the open central Pacific and the intensity guidance does bring it down and actually earlier the intensity guidance kind of had it going up potentially to a cat four before weakening down now it looks like it's going to be steadily weakening down to below major hurricane intensity in the next 12 to 24 hours before weakening down to just a category two and then a category one hurricane. And it looks like it'll stay a hurricane most likely for the next, the next 48 to 60 hours or so before it, it then kind of drops down below hurricane intensity and continues on as a weakening tropical storm. And then Right behind it, we have Tropical Storm Kelly. You can see that it's very close to Hurricane Iona, and that's actually going to be destructive for for Kelly. More, you know, the two storms kind of interfering with each other, and it's really just going to continue on as a very weak tropical storm before weakening down to a tropical depression. 
still staying well south of Hawaii, so no major impacts expected. And yeah, the track guidance is pretty straightforward on the tracks of these two storm systems. And then the intensity guidance, same thing, keeping it very weak. It's not going to turn into much of anything. Now we have this, that tropical disturbance that did have a high chance of tropical cyclone formation in the central Pacific. But here's the area of low pressure right here. And notice all that thunderstorm activity is being sheared away from the center of the storm. There's pretty much no thunderstorm activity now. It looks like it's trying to redevelop on the south side of the storm system. If it does, then it, and it actually wraps around, it could organize into a low pressure system, but that's not looking very likely. This is Invest 98E. It, it's really just expected to, whether or not it turns into anything, the area of low pressure will continue westward and again, avoiding Hawaii. So these are these are storm systems out in the middle of the open eastern and central Pacific, not causing any land impacts. But the, the disturbances that are closer to Mexico could actually cause indirect impacts potentially with rain and things like that going forward. So here's the intensity guidance for a 98E, really just keeping it at a, at a tropical depression level or a very weak tropical storm, winds of... 35 to 40 miles per hour for the most part. Here's the forecast models for Invest 99E. We're looking at taking this out into the Eastern Pacific. And then the intensity guidance right now is already showing a tropical storm potentially in 12 to 24 hours at the soonest. And then bringing it up to a strong tropical storm if it's able to organize as quickly as they're anticipating on these forecast models before it brings it down. The intensity guidance, if it's able to organize pretty quickly, it could actually go up because conditions are favorable for some development if it stays over the warm sea surface temperatures in the eastern Pacific. Here's a look at the GFS model for that storm system invest 99E right here. This is showing by tomorrow evening, Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific time, you have this area of low pressure right here, tropical depression most likely, and then it is moving kind of quickly because as we go just six hours ahead, it's moved quite a bit, and it's down to a 1,000 millibars. That could be a, a weak tropical storm or something like that. It does try to intensify, but the warm sea surface temperatures only go like out about right here. So once it goes past this, it's pretty much done in terms of an opportunity to strengthen, and you'll see that as as we go forward. So the peak intensity, if, if it moves as quickly as the GFS is, is showing, it only has a, a limited amount of time to strengthen. Going into August 1st, we do have potentially a strong tropical storm on the GFS model before it kind of starts moving into cooler sea surface temperatures and will level off and then start weakening down. But it's still maintaining that tropical storm intensity into early on Saturday, August 2nd, going into this weekend. Notice you do have tropical moisture behind it. Then we have possibly another disturbance, but you see moisture is is funneling into, into western Mexico and also into the southwestern U.S. Um, so then you have another tropical depression there, but this is another storm behind that going into August 5th. So definitely the Eastern Pacific is, is very favorable for tropical activity as the GFS is showing storm after storm after storm. This is all, all the way out past 10 days now. At this point, August 9th, the GFS model is showing a pretty significant hurricane. Now that is definitely subject to, to a lot of change as we go forward over the next over the next 10 days because this is this is almost two weeks out. This is just kind of what the GFS model is showing, but definitely a lot of potential tropical activity going for a while because then the GFS showing another storm system by August 14th in the Eastern Pacific. So a lot happening in the Eastern Pacific, which wasn't necessarily expected to be extremely active, but the Atlantic is completely quiet. Looking at the current satellite imagery for the Atlantic, we, we do have a, a pretty decent tropical wave, but then there's all of this, this, this dry air and, and some Saharan dust, but just really, really dry, stable air being pushed down out in front of these tropical waves. And the tropical waves are, are moving quickly westward into all of that dry air. And there's also going to be 
a lot of shear and just really not a favorable environment to to produce any tropical cyclones for a while. And so here's what the GFS model has for the Atlantic. We have that tropical wave that is moving towards the Caribbean throughout this week going into the into the weekend, but then it pretty much falls apart and we only have just some rain going across the northeastern Caribbean. But then there's also a lot of these these fronts moving off the east coast of the U.S., a lot of those storm systems, that's not going to be favorable for tropical cyclone formation off the east coast of the U.S. unless we get something that separates from those fronts and actually turns into an area of low pressure that could become a, a subtropical or tropical cyclone, which is possible given some of the very warm sea surface temperatures across the southwestern Atlantic. But other than that, not really any tropical activity expected in the Atlantic on the GFS model all the way out to August 14th. So that's definitely not a favorable picture. The Euro model is also showing that tropical wave moving towards the Caribbean. It doesn't turn into pretty much anything at all. But then we do have the Euro model showing by around August 7th, we get another tropical wave. And the Euro model actually wants to turn this into something pretty weak by the time it goes over the northeastern Caribbean around August 10th, August 11th, but by the time we get to like August 13th or so, it does turn into a, an area of low pressure. And then we could have some other stuff trying to, trying to organize out here in the main development region behind that, but really even the Euro model is not showing much activity. Part of the reason why things are so unfavorable for tropical activity is going to be that dry area. We have we have a lot of that moving through. Even, even though there are tropical waves bringing moisture, they just kind of run into all of this dry air and, and don't really do anything. And also, the moisture does get pulled away from the, the tropical wave by some very strong winds in the, in the atmosphere. And part of it is this giant high-pressure system covering the Atlantic really... That's kind of what's what's preventing some of this tropical activity because we have just a lot of that dry air being pushed down, and then also the environmental pressure is actually going to be pretty high in the in the main development region, kind of bringing in more of that dry, stable air, and that's not going to help any tropical waves intensify into storm systems, and so. This goes all the way out until August 14th, pretty much the same thing. Even though you, you start getting those tropical waves trying to, trying to move into that main development region, head towards the Caribbean, you just have all this, this dry air and kind of stable conditions moving through. And then also the wind shear is a problem because you have these strong, these strong winds that aren't allowing that moisture to really, really consolidate into a, a storm system. We have looking at the GFS shear anomaly, kind of showing how much below or above average the wind shear is. And you can see that, yeah, there's a lot of shear. Like, <laughs> it's way above average, of course, off the east coast of the U.S. with all these fronts and extra tropical storm systems moving through, which is kind of interesting to see in the, in the middle of summer. But also watch the Caribbean, watch the main development region in, in this area where... There's a lot of shear. Even the shear is coming out of the east, which is just going to push these storm systems without letting them really organize. And we have also shear going through the, the middle of the Atlantic. But in the main development region, the shear is still above average, going all the way over the next five days, all the way potentially the next six to ten days, August 3rd to August 8th, showing above average shear. Now, you're starting to see some pockets of lower wind shear moving in, which is a good sign for the tropics. Um, you still have a lot of shear, but finally, by the time we go towards August 6th to August 11th, going all the way out, days 12 to 16 for August 9th through August 14th, we still have this, this above average easterly shear off the coast of Africa and the eastern part of the main development region. Then we're starting to see pockets of lower wind shear in the, in the Caribbean, the central part of the Atlantic, and even off the east coast of the U.S., so we'll have to have to monitor that to see when conditions will get more favorable for tropical development 
in the Atlantic. But yeah, it's not looking favorable for tropical activity over the next over the next week. Here's a look at the latest global tropics hazards outlook from the Climate Prediction Center, and they're showing for week two, August 6th to August 12th, we have a slight chance of tropical development off the east coast of the U.S. in the southwestern Atlantic, close to the Bahamas, kind of around Florida, and then also in the eastern Pacific. But yes, a slight chance of tropical development off the east coast, possibly related to that tropical wave that that is moving through the main development region into the towards the Caribbean. It does have a slight a slight opportunity if it gets in this region. That's not extremely favorable, but it's definitely a lot more favorable than the main development region is right now with all that dry, stable air. So we'll definitely have to watch for, for week two. And then for week three, August 13th to 19th, that's when they're thinking things will get a little more favorable in the, in the Atlantic with a slight chance of tropical cyclone formation out on for week three. This outlook was issued today, so this is the latest information on the tropics from, from the Climate Prediction Center. That was for the Atlantic. Now this is the Eastern Pacific, just showing kind of a, a moderate chance of tropical formation for week two, for August 6th to 12th, two areas with potential out in the Eastern Pacific. Now week three, August 13th to 19th, we do have another slight chance of tropical development. So that's what's happening in the tropics. Now, in other news, the extreme heat continues across the eastern and southern parts of the U.S. with extreme heat warnings and heat advisories going across a, a big section of, of the south and even extending as far north as central Illinois going all the way into Mississippi under extreme heat warnings and Florida. Seeing that extreme heat continuing, but also even as far north as New Hampshire and other places in the Northeast seeing some of that heat. And because Florida, they did actually get a heat index like of over 120, apparently. That's some extreme heat over the past couple days. Here's a look at the forecast from the Euro model of that heat index. This is going into tomorrow. We have heat indices of up to 110 across parts of Louisiana, looking at 100 to 105 across Mississippi. And then going into Florida, we do have heat indices of over 105 degrees expected with possibly locally higher heat indices expected there. And then and then it's it's still going for, for Thursday. We do still have those heat indexes of 100 to 110 degrees going across the south. And then finally, by Friday, it, it starts to to flatten down because you you do have a lot of cooler temperatures actually starting to push in from the north. So fortunately, the heat will start coming down, but still pretty hot, even close to 110 degrees along the coast of Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina. And that's on Friday. Finally, going into the weekend on Saturday, you still have that heat, but notice a lot of these temperatures are coming down. You have, it's going to be in the 70s. In North Carolina and Virginia, even even Missouri potentially in the 70s. And these are feels like temperatures, feeling like in the 70s when they were just having feels like temperatures over 100. Then we have um, going into going into Sunday, things stay a bit cooler, even starting to cool down even in Georgia with the heat index feeling like only like 75. So that's pretty much, you know, when that heat is going to start start cooling down, fortunately, across a lot of places in, in the south and kind of the east coast. And here's a look at the temperature anomalies, well above average temperatures happening right now across these regions. But then we have this obvious front right there, cooler temperatures coming down. And this is pretty significant with temperatures almost 20 degrees below average moving in and starting on really on, on Friday and then going all the way into into Saturday with temperatures at least 10 degrees below average, but in some places even cooler than that. So that's pretty much what's happening in, in the tropics and also across the U.S. with that extreme heat that's going on. And so, yeah, if you liked this video, please be sure to hit the like button. If you haven't already, share the video and make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications for more weather updates on the tropics. Thanks for watching. 
Extreme Weather Zone, out.